This is Director of Athletic Communications Adam Heinzen along with Warriors Head Men's Golf Coach Adam Volbrecht to talk about the upcoming season. Coach, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Adam. First off, Coach, let's take it back to last season. In your final meet of the year in the spring, you won the St. Norbert Invite with a school record score of 303. How's your returning players carried that momentum into the off season and into the preseason? You know, not too many teams in the country get to uh, you know go out winning their last tournament of the year. So uh, I think you know more so than than momentum carrying into the off season and, and into this year, just the belief that we can go out and compete and win golf tournaments. You know, and them realizing that now with the trophies to prove it. You know, that's just a huge thing for our program. You return seven letter winners from last year, including NAC Freshman of the Year Sean Essenberg and all-conference performer Jake Godinski, who was the Freshman of the Year two years ago. Um, what can you say about your group of returning players as a whole? You know, we played, I think, as well as anybody in the area in the spring last year. Uh, you know, having seven guys with experience back and, and some guys that, you know, really, really played well last year at certain points. Um, should bode well for this season. You uh, mix in with those returners. You welcome in seven newcomers to the roster for a total of 14, the largest roster that you've ever had in your sixth year here. Uh, how beneficial is that to have the competitive depth this year and people fighting for spots day in and day out to get in tournaments? Yeah, you know, this is a, a new challenge for us, uh, but a new excitement as well. Uh, you know, we had qualifying last week for us to determine who was going to be in our top five and, and play this weekend. Um, as competitive and as consistent a golf as we've ever had, you know, and I think the new kids can, can really hit the ball. And uh, it's eye-opening, I think, for, for our returners who, um, you know, kind of knew there'd be some competition coming in, but to, you know, put, see the whites of people's eyes and see what the scores are and, and to work things out, you know, I'm excited to see you know, how the returners respond to that and, and push back and how they, they continue to lead our new people and to show them what's, what's possible. From what you've seen so far, are there any newcomers that uh, you wouldn't be shocked to see playing most of the tournaments this year? Well, uh, we have a transfer, transfer student coming as a sophomore who's going to play in our top five this week at the Culver's Edgewood Fall Invite. Um, Pete Kaufman, I would anticipate, he's had a year of college golf experience, so you know, his uh, learning curve will probably be a little less steep than the other newcomers, uh, just because he's got that year of college golf in there. Um, and then we have two other freshmen that are going to go along this week and play, uh, Garrett Ralston and Tyler Wood. Both of them had, you know, very successful high school careers, uh, come in with some, some ability and, and really good competitors. Uh, I expect them to be, you know, knocking on that door as well right away. And then uh, we have another transfer who was um, out of golf last year, uh, came in and, and took our last spot for this weekend. Uh, Tyler Hallman will be, a, will be another person to watch out for and see if uh, you know if he can consistently put up the kind of scores that we need. Yeah, it should be a nice group of newcomers to watch this year. Uh, can you talk us, take us through the preseason? What is the practice schedule mainly consisted of, and is there a part of the game that the players work on more than the other? You know, we come in and, and hit the ground running right away with playing golf. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, you know, practice in our preseason. You know, I need to I need to determine and assess right away who's who's playing the most consistent golf. Uh, you know, putting up the scores that we need in, in our competitive rounds and the tournaments that we're going to play in the next couple weeks. Uh, so we do that. We get them right out on the golf course right away um, and have them turn in scores. And that kind of informs our practice. You know, for the rest of the fall more than it does the first couple weeks. Um, Great, and definitely practice huge not only during the season, but it gives you a good eye on what the kids did over the summer. Yeah, you know, they think I, a lot of times it's hard to tell uh, who's played the most and how and what they've practiced. You know, it, it's pretty evident, you know, who came in ready to play and who didn't. And, you know, one of the great things about being a Division three institution is that, you know, we got a lot of kids that are working hard over the summer, you know, earning that money to pay for school. Um, and they don't, they don't have a chance to be at their country club every day and play, um, and play tournaments all over the country, you know, like some of the top juniors do. But, 
you know, we get that mixed with kids that are really dedicated and work hard and find time to find time to maximize their practice, no matter what their summer commitments are. Taking a look at your schedule, you have a uh, busy and difficult uh, fall schedule, competing in nine events before the first two rounds of the NACC tournament, uh, the second weekend in October. Did you purposely um, one schedule the amount of meets, but looking at your schedule, uh, very competitive meets that you're going to be playing in. You're going to go to Eau Claire, obviously you start the season at Edgewood, which some good teams are always at. You're going to Eau Claire, uh, the Midwest Region Classic, which is new this year, 40 teams going to be competing at that. Just take us through your schedule and uh, what are you looking to get out of it before that conference tournament? I'm looking to identify the top five guys that are going to give us the best chance to to uh, perform well in our conference tournament. You know, that being said, we do have a difficult, busy schedule, and I want to give our guys every opportunity that we can to play. You know, I think if you look look around at, at other colleges that are in a similar situation to us, you know, we have a great opportunity to play in a lot of events, whereas, you know, there's a lot of schools in the country that don't get to play the number of events we do. So, you know, very, very thankful for the blessing that we have to to get out and compete and play a bunch of different venues and a bunch of, a bunch of good competition. Um, you know, this is the first year we can go into every tournament that we're going to play and expect to compete to win the tournament. You know, in the past, we, we haven't had that expectation, been able to have the talent, the depth of talent to expect to do that. And this year, you know, we're playing against some good teams, but a lot of the same uh, tournaments we've played in the past. And, you know, we're going to go in probably with a little bit different expectation. Uh, we want to win. Every time we go out there, we want to win. Definitely, it's just fun to see the mindset of the team change over the, you know, the course of your tenure, and look where the team has come uh, when it's been competing at the conference tournament. How you want to be in that upper half for sure, competing for the title this year? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I think we're going to do everything we can to control what we can control. We're going to go out and, and play the best possible rounds of golf we can every time we're on the golf course. Um, that being said, you know, the top of our conference is stacked. Um, you know, I'm not a big predictor but you know if, if you see the top 25 rankings at the end of the end of the season I'd be very surprised if we don't have a couple of uh, NACC conference schools in that top 25 competing at the national tournament at a high level um, whereas the conference just hasn't had that depth for a few years so I'm very excited to see you know good quality competition coming out of our conference you know and, and nothing being handed to anybody whoever's going to win our conference is going to earn it should be an exciting uh, race uh, it should be exciting here, not only leading up to the conference, but uh, first, the four rounds, definitely, two in the fall, two in the spring. It's going to be a coin toss. There's going to be some few teams up there who ever have a shot. So Yeah, definitely. You know, and I just, I told I told my team I was going to do this. Uh, i got to say a big thank you to uh, Gary at Edgewood for accommodating us. He's letting us bring, you know, two teams to his tournament this weekend. He's got a great field uh, always, but... Uh, just allowing us to get a couple of our teams uh, out there, get 10 guys out there and compete in a college golf tournament is just invaluable for our, for our new people that are coming into the program and for our returners to get out and play with them and play as a team. You know, so it's going to show up on the score sheet as, as two different teams, but we're really taking one team of 10 people this weekend. I'm so excited to see, see the results. That should be fun. The Warriors open their season Friday and Saturday, competing at the Culver's Edgewood Fall Classic at... Glen Aaron Golf Club in Janesville. Coach, good luck not only this weekend, but throughout the fall season. We'll talk to you as the season goes on. Thanks, Adam. We'll have to be hydrated for sure. It's going to be a hot one. Stay cool. Thank you.